everyone and welcome to my manga kind of 2.5 BL Bonanza video. Um, if you watch my other manga pickups video then you will know that this is all the BL stuff I got for this second half of the month. Um, I mainly did this so I would could cut down on the actual time of my main manga video because I know not all my viewers are interested in BL works and shonen eye stuff. So, but but also allowing to give the proper amount of time to this stuff that I do know I'll, that I know that a lot of my viewers do enjoy hearing about. So, um, the reason I have so much BL this month is because uh, last Christmas in the Right Stuff's Christmas sale, they had a lot of titles that were two, three dollars that I was very interested in. Um, so. Uh, I wanted to buy them, but because of the shipping, I couldn't actually afford to directly buy them. So I bought them through a proxy who uh, has quite a long uh, storage time. <laughs> so I didn't actually ship them out until earlier this month to me. Um, and But because of that, there was also a lot of stuff that I forgot I had bought. In this box, there was other stuff, just tip normal uh, manga as well as anime and some light novels as well. So it wasn't all BL, but most of it was. And a lot of stuff that I had completely forgotten that I had ordered. So, um, yes, there are some things that before, you know, when I opened the box, it's like, what? What is this? Why, why did I get, why did I order this? What the, what the heck? Um, so rather than dilly-dallying, because there is quite a bit here, I'm just going to go pretty quickly. Um, so the first... Thing that I had actually remembered that I ordered was You and Me, etc. by Kugo. This is a kind of collection of stories. It's a one shot. Um, and sort of all high schoolers, the main couple on the front here are high school friends who used to play baseball together. One has since been in an accident. The other one also quit because of that accident. And sort of how they try to, or how it's affected their relationship. They've been childhood friends forever. Um, that Their story takes up two chapters of this book. There's also another two-chaptered story in this book of a young musician running away from home to kind of find his father's student, or one of his past students, um because he doesn't feel welcome in his home anymore. It's that one's quite interesting. It's an, uh it's a little bit different from what you would expect and I thought it was fairly strong. And the the f final um story in this which is one chaptered is quite interesting because it is told from an outsider's perspective. So it is a gay romance between actually a student and a teacher. Um, but the story itself is told from an outsider's perspective of another student kind of seeing all this happen and how he interacts with the other student, which is not something I've really seen before in BL manga, so I thought it was done very well. Um, I really liked this book. I thought all of the stories were really strong, and the art style itself is fairly fairly nice for what it is. So yes, if you find this one or if you're interested in it, I can really recommend it. I thought it was pretty enjoyable. Um, it was published by Blue, which was Tokyo Pop's um, BL line, so technically it's out of print, but I know you can get it on Amazon and write stuff and a whole bunch of other places because it's there are lots of copies floating around. Next is another one that I had completely forgotten that I had ordered and I had absolutely no idea um, what to expect with this one. Um, and this that is Secret Thorns by Kikuko Kikuya. Um, again, just a one volume series and it's about a editor, magazine editor, and a writer who used to date, then broke up because one was a bit of a playboy and would always have, you know, women over entertaining them and all sorts of things, but have been brought together again because, because of work. 
Um, so they have to work together and they kind of end up living together and it's sort of reconnecting and seeing how they've changed and whether or not the relationship can work this time. Um, it's fairly good. I wasn't, this one is very, very, um, <laughs> very tame. I believe it's, yeah, 16 plus. So really nothing explicit whatsoever. It's got sort of, uh, more of the, uh, I don't know how to explain the art style. It's not good, but it's not bad. It's just sort of, it's serviceable. It does its job for what it is. And it, the cover is a perfect representation of it. Um, you're not getting any more or less than what you see on the cover. Um, for what it is, I think it's fairly strong. And if you have the opportunity to pick it up and you, you in, kind of are interested or intrigued, then, um, yeah, I say go ahead. It's definitely worth the, well, it's definitely worth the, the few dollars that I paid for it, but it is, I think, worth a good, mm, ten dollars ten fifteen dollars if you are really interested in the story or in the idea next is one that i have actually read before i don't really remember any of it because i haven't read this book um but i was surprised i didn't remember i had ordered it and that is hinako takanaga's liberty liberty one of her one shot um series i'm not a fan of her kind of flagship series um the Tyrant Falls in Love, but I do enjoy some of her other works, um, most notably Little Butterfly. Um, I don't really remember much of this, to be honest, but if you are a fan of Takanaga, you kind of know what to expect art-wise, story-wise, and um, yeah, it's nothing new, but if you're a fan of Takanaga and you don't own this, um, I, I think it's good. You should um, give it a read. It's no better or worse than her other work. And it's fairly enjoyable for what it is. Next is one I had absolutely no recollection of ordering at all. Um, and in saying that as well, the front cover, like art style, didn't do anything for me. It really is not the sort of cover that draws me to a BL series. It just looks, I don't know, but I feel like maybe I looked up the story and thought it was interesting from there, that, and then made the decision with that, oh, it's only a couple dollars, I'll try it. Oh, and that is Elu, Ellie Mamahara's Alley of First Love. Um, again, another Tokyo Pop Blue release. And this one is about uh, two childhood friends who lived in the same uh, area, market area. Um, both their families own stores. And after high school, one of them moved to America or no, England to, for research and the other one stayed home and they kind of lost contact. And it's been five or six years since then and one has come back to kind of uh, rejoin his family and... They, the reconnection that way, it's it's very, very tame. Um, the artwork is nothing great. Um, there There's a lot of anatomy issues, which is, uh, I think, what a lot of people kind of expect with this. But I find that a lot of the series I read don't have too many janky uh, bodies. But this one, the hands are definitely <laughs> and like look at that leg no this it's quite funny but in saying that the story is it's fairly good um like I said I don't know why I was drawn to this main most it I can only think that because it was the childhood friend story I wanted to try it I don't know it is and I think it's fairly highly rated it is a uh, for what it is it's good um, but yeah, it, it, it's a bit of an, an anomaly and I wasn't really, I didn't remember at all that I had ordered it, but you know, um, it is a good read if you see it and it's cheap and you want, and you are a fan of childhood friend stories. Again, this one is older teens, so very, very, um, 
<laughs> mild in its in its um actual sexual content. Um but yes, so that was Ali of First Love. I am kind of interested in reading uh Mamahara's other uh work released in English. The next one is one I did actually order and um this one order not in the big box I mean I, all of these I ordered obviously but this one came separately from that big box of stuff and that is volume one and two of Don't Be Cruel by Yonezo Nekota. Now this is one I think I read the scans beforehand and um I didn't really remember that much of it from what I had read uh, aside from there's, it's the nerdy guy and then the kind of bad boy and then they end up together but I forgot or I didn't remember or well, didn't for, didn't remember and forget is the same thing that it the first half of this volume so the first volume generally is very kind of dubiously is very dubious it's just very kind of off-putting and uncomfortable there's a there's it's the sort of thing that is not uncommon in BL, but I'm really not a fan of. Um, one of the tropes that I think gives BL and Yao and Shonen and I a very bad name amongst people who have never really uh, read anything before. So, um, yeah, the first half of this is quite, un for me, quite uncomfortable to read. Um, it, it involves um, kind of... The, their, the beginning of their relationship and their sexual relationship via um, blackmail, which is never... I, I don't know. It For me, it really is not something I enjoy reading. But the second half of this is almost like a completely different series. I feel like the first volume was something that Nekota wrote as just a one-shot series but then the series or she got more attached to the characters or the series was more popular than she expected so it she continued it and it got a lot longer and I think there was a huge quite a large shift in character personalities which makes them a lot more likable for one and the relationship a lot less dubious so the second half is quite typical high school drama romance stuff but the first half is really not <laughs> that at all. So it's a hard one for me to recommend because it is um, kind of difficult to read the first bit. For me at least. If you're used to that or you don't have a problem with it, then that's fine and more power to you. Um, but don't go into this expecting um, like a really... I don't know. Don't go into this with preconceived notions of um, what it might be about it like I said it starts very rough but it does improve so um like I said I've read it online I've read some of the scans online f past this volume at least I know um years and years ago which is why I don't really remember anything about this um aside from the characters and uh yeah so it's something that I've read some of Nekota's other work, and if you know Nekota's other work, there are some series that I really enjoy a lot more than this one, but um, Don't Be Cruel is okay if you know what you're going into. Um, in addition, <laughs> this one really earns its explicit content warning. There is a lot of sex a lot of the time, and it is very, very detailed artwork. So, um... Yeah, again, if you're not put off by that or if um, you have no problem with that, cool, good. I don't have a problem with that, but it is a fair, something to warn about because um, obviously not every artist does their intimate scenes the same way and there's a lot of um, sexual content in this. So, don't be cruel. Bit of an odd one. Um, I can't really say I recommend it, but if you know what you're go getting into, then... Uh, Sublime has done a fairly decent release of it and the two-in-ones do allow you to kind of get to the good part of the story um, uh, quicker than if it was a single volume release. 
Um, and yeah, so that was Don't Be Cruel. The rest is all Fumi Yoshinaga stuff. Um, and I, this video is already kind of longer than I wanted it to be. So I'm going to go through these fairly quickly. Um, actually, I'll go through these ones first because I have I did actually previously own these, but um, they were secondhand copies, so I picked up the newer the new ones for like I said, a few dollars each, um, just to replace the ones that I were ex library copies, and that is Lovers in the Night, um, the kind of companion volume series to uh, Truly Kindly and expanding on the one of the couples from that volume and volumes one and two of Gerard and Jacques a kind of historical romance series set during the French revolutionary period and uh, definitely worth the read um this these sorts of series it's much less about the romance and the relationship and much more about what is going on um historically and you know societally with the characters which is a big thing i really enjoy about yoshinaga's work um, i've talked about these ones before in previous whole videos in fact that um so i'm not like i said i'm not going to linger too long on those the rest are stuff that i haven't uh, i haven't owned before but I did actually talk about some of them during my manga pickups video or, or my midweek manga video pardon me um but so those are uh don't say anymore darling which is a collection of one chapter stories varying from pretty typical BL stuff to some interesting questions on what it means to be happy what it means to be human and sort of those sorts of things that don't really come up in BL a lot. We also have a lot of, uh, quite a few uh, chaptered stories in this that aren't really focused on um, like a gay relationship. One especially that is actually a heterosexual couple and their marriage and how it breaks down and why it breaks down. Um, so yeah, it is kind of an interesting one to read even for people who are not necessarily BL fans um if you're a Yoshinaga fan then I definitely recommend this one uh and the other one which I waxed poetic about in my last midweek manga video was uh The Moon and the Sandals um volumes one and two of that the complete series like I said, this is not something that uh, really recreates the wheel, but it's it's something that's been done before, but in a very refreshing way, and it's a very strong first series for Yoshinaga. This was her first public published series, and the amount of um, pathos it has the amount of emotional connection you have for um, some of the characters, if not all of the characters, is very, very strong. And like with all of her works, her characters feel very, very human. Aside from just the main couples, we also have a lot of side characters who feel like actual people and aren't just relegated to be um, kind of just there for the sake of it. They do play a important role in the series um, and how the, the characters sort of interact with each other. So yes, again, if you're a Yoshinaga fan, I highly recommend these ones. Um, this is probably one of her strongest, uh, strongest purely BL series. Um, She's written a lot of a lot more captivating and interesting and series since, but considering this was her first series that she had ever written, and um, how strong it is, it is definitely worth the read if you are interested. And finally, for the BL and for the Yoshinaga stuff, um, we have volumes one and two of Ichi Genmei. The first class is Civil Law. And this is the story of two law students in university. Um, and the first volume is... Oh, hit the camera. The first volume is really how they get together. The second volume is 
several years later and how their relationship has developed since then and how things have changed and their perception of each other has changed and those sorts of things. Um, this one is quite a decent read. I think it has, again, interesting cast of characters. It's fairly uh, fun. The The secondary um, relationship in the second volume isn't... I don't feel it's really necessary, but I do appreciate what it tries to do. Um, this one was actually released by 801 Media, which was um, Dark Horse... Dark Horses? Uh, Digital Manga Publishing's uh, release, or, yeah, kind of, uh, yaoi b releases before they established June. So it's a little bit different than, uh, what you would see nowadays. So, as you can tell, these are fairly old volumes <laughs> and still, um, very, very accessible. You can get them pretty much anywhere. Uh, it's always a sort of a shame that th something that's been around for so long is so um, prolific because it does imply that it didn't sell well, but at the same time it does mean that fans are able to still get it fairly easily. Um, both of these were first edition printings and they came out in 2007 so they're nearly a decade old um but yeah it's if you're a fan of Yoshinaga pick them up they're not as strong as some of her other stuff but it's still fairly enjoyable and I think that it kind of again has a very realistic take on just relationships in general uh, not even having to kind of specify them being uh, homosexual relationships. it. I always think that um, Yoshinaga does a very good job in being relatable and realistic while still being engaging. Um, but that was all of my BL that I got for this month. There was a lot, like I said, most of it was Yoshinaga stuff because I want to get all of her work because I'm just such a big fan. And uh, there is, there was quite a bit of it that I hadn't, uh, that I didn't have, but now I believe I have, I think, everything that's been released in English. I'm not sure. I will have to double check, but I believe I do. The only things I have to worry about now is her ongoing series, um, uh, Oku and What Did You Eat Yesterday? Um, but yes, so that was all of the BL that I got this month, um, and hopefully for you watching this was fairly interesting. Um, like I said, some of these things were a big surprise when I got them, I wasn't expecting them at all because I just had a really bad memory and didn't remember what I had ordered. Um, but yes, hopefully my little insight has given you given you some interest for some titles um and uh thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video guys bye till then